Hi guys, welcome back. I finally got around to building my compressed air cylinder pellet trap. Now the donor for this is this crusty old compressor that you can see here. I'm gonna get it all stripped down. Now I wasn't sure what tools I'd need to pull it all apart, so I bought both metric and imperial spanners. Let's get into it, shall we? Right, that was easy enough to strip down. I had a bit of a wafty leg, so I've just given that a bit of a beating just to true it up a little bit. One of these legs is slightly shorter than the other, so I think we just need to put like a little wooden block under or something like that. It's not in too bad a condition by the look of things. It needs a slightly better clean up. I'll probably paint it when we're finished, but the plan is, is to cut sort of a trap door in it. The one thing that I'm thinking at the moment is I probably want it horizontal as opposed to vertical. Now, you could probably do either way. You could make a base to stand it up, I suppose. The interesting thing is this is only rated to 12 bar, so it's not rated to anywhere near the pressures of our typical dive bottles or anything like that. It sounds like it's got quite a thin wall, and if you rattle it, it sounds like there's a bit of rust and junk in there, so we maybe have to clean the inside of it out as well. But the one thing that I do want to do, I'm going to mark out the sort of doorway, but I want to put the hinge on, or at least drill my holes first for the hinges so that they're in the right position, and then we'll just slip through the slitting disc underneath where the pivot point will be. Just going to spend a bit of time working out where I'm going to put the trap door, then we can have it open up like this. But I think that might well work out all right. Being as it's a pressure vessel, you'd like to think that it's sort of fairly robust. So I'm hoping that the pellets won't damage it. Like I say, at this point, I don't know quite how thick the, or I don't know what the wall thickness is on here, but I'm sure we'll find out in a moment. So I'm gonna pop this hinge up on the top here. I think this is the way we're gonna shoot into it. We'll cut the door in here so it will pivot back. All right, let's get some masking tape out and then we'll mark them hinges up. We cut on the inside of the tape line. That'll probably work all right. So the hinge is going to sit roughly there. So what we'll do in a moment, once we've finalised the shape of the door, we'll mark those up, centre punch those, and drill those first. It's going to be an awful lot easier to do it while it's all one piece. It's vented to atmosphere as well at the moment, so there's no pressure inside of it. I think we'll come around here. I think we'll probably step up around that leg there, possibly. Yeah. Let's freestyle it, see what we end up with, shall we? It's a little bit offset, but I don't really want to cut this weld off here because it means we've got to clean it up and weld it all and I can't be bothered and I'm not that good at welding anyway. So we'll cut it around here, we'll cut on the inside, but what we'll do now then is get that on there, centre that hinge over my cut line, and mark those holes up and I'll drill them. Right, I think it's probably easier just to do this on the deck. It's relatively stable down here and there's less, a few little twigs, but there's no loads of grass or anything to get set on fire from any wayward sparks. So we'll do it here. I can sort of kneel on it as I'm going. Obviously got my safety squints and my ear defenders and I've got just one mil thick stainless slitting discs in there. So I should be able to cut on the inside of this line quite well. Look, now our hinge will straddle the cut portion, run around the side. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm sure we can do it.
Well, that's actually cut pretty well. I've stopped just short of the corners. I didn't want any nasty overlapping ones. So I'm just going to get in there with a hacksaw blade just to keep them nice and square. I think once we've done that, we'll take it home, start giving it a clean up, and then we'll work out what we've got. We've got quite a lot of height here. Once that pivot's back there, we could probably stand a 17 centimetre target in there. I may put a wooden base in as well, depending on what sort of targets we want to use. I think it's going to be handy so it's not specifically set up just for, say, spinners. I think it'd be nice that we can use it to collect all sorts of different stuff. And maybe because it's going to be a bit more weatherproof, we can leave it out in the fields. We won't have to worry too much about bringing it in like some of the wooden sort of pellet traps. So, all right, let's clean these corners out. Oh, she's gross on the side. Wow, that's why you should always <laughs> empty and lubricate your compressors. Actually, that's quite thick. The wall on that's probably, it's got to be nearly two mil. Right, I can clean all these edges off of here. I think what we'll do, we'll um, probably attack that with a wire brush and a wire wheel maybe hammer right the insides of it. Right, so the plan is, I'll bolt the hinge on there later. That should fold back and if we're lucky, might need to just grind that little box off of there. Those two tabs here should almost sit on top of each other. Yeah, if we're lucky, that should open up like that and sit somewhere like that, maybe. All right, quite happy so far. It's a shame that it's a bit grotty inside. Good job it's only rated for 12 bar. I wonder if this is sort of heat treated still. It cut really nicely. I don't know. Right, I'm going to give this a quick wire brush out, maybe get the old wire wheel in there on the drill. Then we'll run it home, bolt the hinges on later on and start cleaning her up. guys I've been giving it a bit of a flat off trying to get this thing tidied up and it's absolutely destroying me at the moment I thought it was going to be quite straightforward I've been using sort of surface conditioning discs these are 3m ones these actually are putting a reasonable finish on it but there's an awful lot of hidden corrosion now this white coat in here appears to be something along the lines of an epoxy high build sort of primer something like that you can certainly see it's all built up in the edges they obviously use that to cover up some of the welds and make it look a bit nicer however there's an awful lot of hidden corrosion on here even if you look at this little bit here, you can see where it's raised up. Well, that's fully rusty underneath. And there's actually some really quite bad pitting, which is a bit scary, really, when you consider this is, or at least it was, a pressure vessel. And it's the same with the inside. Look, we've got some areas, of course, where the moisture hasn't been and it's cleaned up all right, but the pitting inside of here is way worse than anything I can clean up with the tools we've got here. You'd have to hit that with a big sort of grinder, whatever, and actually try and cut the whole thing back, which, of course, you can't do inside. There's just not enough access. So... I'm going to have to bite the bullet, we're just going to give it a wire brush off, let it dry out in the sun for a little bit, and then just going to paint over it. Had I known this at the start, I think what I would have done is just given it a quick wire brush off and hammer righted the whole thing, because of course we are only going to be shooting at it, it's a target holder after all, but I would be a bit careful, a lot of people use these and turn them into little barbecue burners. The smell off of this is absolutely awful, I definitely wouldn't want to be using this, I mean once it's burnt off maybe it's fine, but I definitely wouldn't want to be using one of these as a barbecue burner. So I'm going to give this a quick clean up, get it out in the sun, get some paint on it, and then once it's dry tomorrow we're going to put a little shelf in the base here. I'm hoping that we can stand some targets in the base here, and of course because it's a little bit more enclosed I'm hoping that it's going to stop any ricochets, and if we do get some pellets that ping off it should hopefully catch them a bit. So, alright, let's get cracked on shall we? Right, I'm just 
myself a little board here. I'm just going to put a little chamfer on the edges so it sits nicely in the bottom of the cylinder. do it so it's got just a slight taper on either side let's go and bring it in and we'll see if it fits because of all the corrosion and pitting in there that sits in there pretty well now the whole idea with this is that we can use it we can configure it depending on what we want to actually shoot so i want to get some freestanding silhouette targets you know the little animals the little knockdown ones we can just stand those in there hopefully that'll obviously keep them intact that will keep the pellets collected as well which would be interesting but it also means because of the size of this we can actually put 17 centimeter traps in here we can do an awful lot with this i don't think i'm going to use it upright we could also put some spinners across the middle so we can configure it how we need to but i think the thing we need to do now is go and shoot it see how resilient this actually is i'm hoping that it's a half decent grade of steel I'm just a little bit annoyed that the inside of that was quite as corroded as it is so right let's get up the farm shall we Right, I've just tucked it in the shade at the farm at the moment. We're down in the sheltered spot. What I've done, I've just bent a bit of welding wire up there and put a little clip over the top here. So that's actually holding the lid sort of in a suspended position, which actually, if you look up under here, we had a slight gap. Now, when I'm at the firing point, it sits like that. So that means we can't put any pellets out through the back of it. Hopefully with the overhang back towards us, it should mean that it collects any more of the sort of spent pellets, the ricochets and things like that. So what we're going to do now is get the old Catran set up and chuck a load of pellets just into the back of it without a target in there because I want to see how robust this steel is. It certainly feels pretty good. I'm a bit disappointed of how pitted that is in the back. So we're probably going to end up getting some paint chips and things like that. But let's be honest, guys, we are only shooting at it. So it should work quite well it looks like it's well enclosed i'm quite happy in terms of its sort of safety aspect side of things hopefully it lasts and then we'll chuck a few different targets in shall we okay i'm just getting everything set up we've got the catran here at the moment i've just loaded up a magazine with the jsb ultrashock pellets these are one of their heavier pellets they're one of the most destructive pellets especially through this this runs sort of 11.6 foot pounds of these it's actually the most powerful sub-12 rifle that I've got. Most of the others are detuned. So we're going to chuck a load of pellets into the back in a sort of scattered area. And then we're going to go and see how much damage we get. I've got the other camera set up as well. I'm hoping that we might get some slow-mo footage or relatively slow-mo, as much as you can do on a DJI camera. So I'm going to move everything around. Let's go shoot some holes in it. Right, the other camera is on. It's really windy. Hopefully you can hear me. Somewhere in the middle, hopefully you can see. You can see that there's a bit of that pitting starting to chip away. Right, this is actually really interesting. We've got a load of the pellet shards in here. I'm going to take the lid back. But we've got a couple of bits here. These are from the fresh pellets. And I can guarantee what's happened is they've come back and hit the rear. Some of the bits have come up and actually then they ended up hitting underneath of the lid and it's just dropped them back down in front of me, which is pretty cool because otherwise they would scatter right back. Now, I'm trying to just be a bit more responsible on the farm. Don't want to be pinging lead everywhere. Now, it means obviously I get to build these cool things, make some videos, and also with all the animals and stuff up here, if it means I can just make sure there's a bit less lead floating around, especially with the new horses and stuff, they're a bit dim. So, you know what will happen, they'll end up eating all of this lot. So, let's have a look in here. Well, there's no obvious signs that they've actually hit that. I've put, what, four or five on top of each other there. 
Well, that has collected that up really quite well. So we've just got a couple of little bits that have scattered out the front. But interestingly, not even the remotest signs of a ding or a dent on there so it's got to be a reasonable quality steel which is what I was hoping that's the reason why I did this because I thought being as it's an air cylinder of course it's got to be made out of something other than old scrap pig iron that's pretty interesting let's go and chuck a couple more in let's stick a couple of the um I'm going to put the old biathlon target in here quickly and see whether or not it collects them from that and we'll see whether or not it was worth making but at the moment it seems to be working pretty well it's doing everything we need it to. It's been a fun little project actually. It was quite a lot trickier than I thought it was going to be, especially when this lid, once I cut it off, it all sort of twisted. It took a little while just to try and jimmy it all back together, but considering it's literally made from a scrap compressor, not too bad at all. Right, but at this point, I'm actually really happy with that. A little bit upset that it's so crusty on the inside. I think I probably won't bother cleaning that up any further. Like I say, it's only a target holder, but Right, let's see if we can knock down these biathlon targets and see whether or not collects the pellets from them. Do you reckon we can thread one through the hole in the middle? I doubt it. <laughs> 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 well, she works like a treat. Collected all the pellets in here, one little tiny shard that's just dropped down, so I guess, I reckon, again, it's gone up, hit the lid, and that's just dropped it straight back down there, so that actually works way better than I thought it was going to. The steel is actually of reasonable quality. I don't obviously know for higher powered stuff, I reckon 22LR would probably end a couple of shots in there would go through that eventually. But for sub 12 stuff, definitely. I mean, you could always line this out with the old putty. Like I've got the old putty lined pellet traps. That wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea. You could always just put a couple of bolts into here just to allow it to sort of adhere to the back there. Gutted about this, but for a freebie from the scrap pile, we've actually got something that's working pretty well, relatively portable. I'm happy guys. Right, that will do it for this one. I will catch you next one. In the next couple of weeks, we've got some really cool stuff to do. I'm hoping, well, I've got a few things, little projects on the go that I probably can't tell you about just yet, but as soon as I can, I will do. So I'll see you in the next one.